If you haven't made an intentional effort to shape your company culture, you're probably embracing your default culture or your default DNA. Default cultures aren't actively inclusive or innovative. They have hidden problems and they detract from your bottom line. Welcome to the Culture Base Podcast. I'm Dustin. He's Blake. Episode 57. Today, we're going to talk about what is your default DNA. We'll get into that in just a second. But before we do, I want to remind you that we're here to help leaders know what they're about, show where they're going, and develop a scalable team to get them there. We would love for you to subscribe on all audio podcast platforms, as well as YouTube, like and ring the bell. You can find us on uh, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, probably even some Facebook stuff at the Culture Base, B A S E, or you can go to theculturebase.com to learn more about us and book your free 30 minute strategy session. And lastly, our new page, uh, theculturebase.com slash resources, is loaded with some free resources for you, including uh, our new ebook, The Scalability Playbook. So go there and download that. You can also get the best interview questions ever. PDF guide for free as well. So let's get into it. Uh, let's see. We're talking about what's your default DNA. Mm-hmm. And so let me just kind of define this whole default DNA thing as a as an organization. So there's a website called leaderfactor.com, some really great articles and stuff on there. And Leader Factor defines it this way. They say, if you haven't made an intentional effort to shape your company culture, you're probably embracing your default culture or your default DNA. Default cultures aren't actively inclusive or innovative. They have hidden problems and they detract from your bottom line. Mm. Man, that's good. Um, First off, I love that both of us are wearing a long sleeve shirt today um, or a jacket or a cardigan um, because I love when we get closer to fall, my default starts to become Mr. Rogers with a kick. And so I'm pumped about that. I love that that's happening. But I love this idea of a, like understanding this concept of a default culture. And it makes me go to this idea. And I've talked about this before, but I think it's really important that when we think, like Peter Drucker says, <clears throat> that culture eats strategy for breakfast. Okay. I think that's a baseline we need to understand. And it's either something you got to believe to be true or you don't, whatever, but it does, right? Culture will eat strategy for breakfast, which means it doesn't matter how good your strategy is to scale your team, to do something. If you don't have the right team and the right culture and the right support for development and uh, being able to scale, you're just going to fail and you're going to fail spectacularly, right? Like you're going to fail like a Texan at that point. So, When we're talking about that, it makes it sound like culture is this thing that's alive uh, in this like animalistic sense. And I do believe it's alive, but I believe it's like a garden, not so much like an animal that's going to attack you, but a garden that is going to steal resources. And what do I mean by that? I mean, when you're thinking about gardening and you're planting and you're getting the ground the way it needs to be, and you're setting it up in the right place to get all the right resources for whatever, is this a shaded plant or is this a plant that needs a ton of sunlight? And you're going through all of that, that if you all of a sudden plant all that stuff and you say strategy, here we go, we're going to do it. And then you just say, culture doesn't matter. And you do nothing to that garden henceforth. You're just like, I'm done. What's going to happen? Nothing happened? No, something is going to happen. Weeds are going to start growing. You, You didn't have to plant those weeds. You didn't have to water those weeds. You didn't have to do anything for those weeds, but they grew up They started stealing resources from whatever your plants are. And sure, their scaling is still going to happen. Growth is still going to happen, but it's going to be resource like starved, nutrient starved. You're not going to get the best produce from it and potentially could get no produce from it. That's what happens in default culture. When we think, oh, everything's, I can be hands off now because I think that's what we want to get to is I want to be hands off. Um, there isn't a hands-off. There, there are always going to need to have hands in good culture. 
Okay. And so what we're talking about today is this, that default culture. When we do nothing, when we think, oh, that process is good enough and we just let it roll into existence, weeds are going to start coming. Yeah. I mean, we're all about scalable teams here, right? And that's why most business owners and leaders are listening to this podcast. It's not because necessarily they are huge into how do I help the culture of my business, but really how do I scale my business? And part of scalability obviously is that culture. We've said it before, that culture is the language of scalability. So with that in mind, you know, the problem is, is in this default culture is we start making the steps towards a healthy culture, you know, towards that ideal culture that we talk about in the scalability playbook, we start making steps towards that. But in that, we start making a little progress. And just like anything else in life, like if you're on a diet, like right now, I'm on this animal based diet thing. I'm, I'm eating like grass fed beef meatballs and raw cheese for lunch. Dang. That's what I'm eating. Um, it's great because I'm not hungry as, as I would be in like a normal diet, Mm. but I have a choice to make, right? I start seeing results of that diet, that muscle mass starts producing because of the higher protein intake. I start seeing results of that diet. I have a choice to make to either go good enough for me, take my hands off the steering wheel and let the car wreck or (laughs) for just a very violent analogy, or I can continue down that path and see continued growth. I can continue to scale towards my goals. And so the tendency is one of two things is either to go, um, the default DNA for us or the default culture for us is to either like we, we go back to it because we're like, okay, we made some progress and we take our hands off the wheel. The other end of that stick is we go, we do nothing like uh, like Blake was just describing that culture is a garden, dig it, that we do nothing and the weeds arise because doing nothing always leads to something. Hmm. It, so, can ahead. I say about that specifically? Yeah. It's real easy to stay 30,000 foot view here and be like, oh no, I've got a pulse on my company. Hmm. But when you break it down into your sales, your ops, your finance admin, and you're looking at the pieces of your company, I, I would... I would stretch to say that you're probably focused in one area and you're defining that as being focused in your company. Mm -hmm. But like if I just look at one garden bed and define the whole by that one piece, I'm missing the fact that all those things are connected. They're all trying to use the same resources. They all need that focus. And so I would break it down another layer and tell you that as you're going through this and you're trying to understand where your default is, that you got to look at all aspects. You can't just look at the one. Yeah. And so we're going to try to fast forward this episode a little bit today and kind of get to the solution really quickly. I think we've painted a good picture of what the problem is. But at the end of the day, we want you to get through this episode quickly, whether you're listening on normal or half or double time speed or whatever, and, and get out there and start the solution. And so we have three things that we think will help you scale out of your default DNA. And the first thing is this, is gain outside perspective. I want you to think about a time in your life where you experienced any growth in any sort of way. Odds are that in that somewhere early on in that growth, someone else gave you a different perspective than what you were able to see for yourself. And they said, you don't see this, but I see this. And you took that as wisdom and you acted upon it and therefore you grew from it. It's no different in our businesses. It's no different in our organizations. It's certainly no different in our culture. So am I saying hire the culture base to come in and help? Uh Uh-huh, sure I am. But I'm also saying if not us, somebody else, doesn't matter. You need to gain outside perspective to really understand. It's kind of that whole scientific uh, notion. When you hear yourself, uh, back in the day, we used to have these things called answer machines. Remember answering machines? <laughs> and you, you would get home and you would leave yourself a message so that you wouldn't forget something. And you would get home and you would play it back and you'd be like, is that how I sound? I'm never talking again. <laughs> <laughs> because it's scientifically impossible for you, to, for you to hear how your own voice sounds because of the compression in your own and in, in the in your skull and how the sound waves work. It's physically impossible for you to hear that. Like when I listen to this podcast back, I go next. Like I don't like to hear it. Um, but. In the same way, it's impossible for you to have full perspective on your own. And we're going to we're going to get to number two here in a second. But is there anything you want to say about gaining 
outside perspective here, Blake. Yeah, and I think the next thing actually kind of leads maybe into the second. So, but it's yeah. it's like this nope. bridge, right? And so when when we say like, hey, have someone come in like the culture base or something, um, if there isn't some product that helps you understand all those different aspects and where you're weak, where you're strong, how you would be evaluated, um, how do you know what to work on? This mm. is data 101. Data tells a story. And the story to come up with all that data, especially when it comes to our culture and our people and all these other things, we don't know how to give data to things. And we've had a podcast in this in the past. We don't know how to give things data. And so we don't. Just because you don't know how to do something doesn't mean it's impossible. And at the culture base, we came up with the 360 culture review that is all about the scalability of your team. We come up with a percentage of scalability of how your team is going to be able to grow. We have people bring come in and get us just to do this thing. May, they may not use our services long term. That's great. Whatever. But they know I need to know what my baseline is. I need to know where I'm at so that where I invest it's actually in a spot that needs investment. If you're like, oh, I should just keep investing in sales because that's where you've always invested, you, you might be wrong. And your sales are good. It's like out punting your coverage. You're going to put way too much into one thing and then you're not going to have the operational force to take care of it. And you're going to go against some core values that you really care about, but you're not going to be able to, to suffice. And you're going to start hiring the wrong people because you're trying to do it quickly. And, and then the, the whole thing falls apart. And so when we say getting outside perspective, really that goes into the second step of practicing self-evaluation, but getting some understanding of what, what am I bad at? I mean, there was a while back, Dustin and I have both done this actually kind of individually where we sent out to people that we really cared about who knew us as people. And we said, Hey, I just want you to tell me like, what are the areas I have blind blinders on? What are areas that I need to increase and do better? What are areas I do really well at? What are things that I bring to a room nobody else brings? And yeah. when we do that, we come to better understandings to help balance out our weaknesses. You may not turn them into strengths. I don't think that's always the answer, but we balance it and find people around us who can help us. Hey, by the way, you're stepping into your dark zone. You need to come on out. Come out. Don't, don't go down that path. And you need that for your team and your company as well. Yeah. Yeah. You need it for yourself. You need it for those that are, are those that are around you. You're building the team around you that can provide you that feedback. Right. Um, I, 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 I had a blog, I guess it was earlier this week. If I look, um, at the date. Yeah, I think it was, no, it was last week. Uh, last week I released a blog, uh, on my site, dustinp.com, um, about, self-reflection. And in it, I talk about this. There's some ways that you can actually practice this self-evaluation. Um, seeking feedback is number three on my list. Not that there's a top four, but it was a third. It was one that I listed on, on, on there. The other two that I want to mention as well uh, is journaling. And, and mm -hmm. if this is something that you're like, eh, that's for ladies or that's for soft people or that's for sensitive people, like I don't do that. I just tell you that there's some things sometimes that are hidden in your subconscious that if you just don't let your pen flow, you'll never know that's in there. Yeah, and it. so sometimes doing that, you can look at it and go, oh, well, that's where that that came out. What's 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 to that? Is there something else there? And then you can kind of lean into a little bit more. Another thing is setting aside time for reflection. Mm -hmm. We just had. um uh, a session with an organization in Indianapolis recently. And in that the leader was like, Hey, what are some ways that I can grow as a leader? And we're like, bro, you need to get away probably once a quarter. Uh, cause it's, he's a high visionary. Most probably like most of you that are listening to this right now, like you need to get away once a quarter and just set aside time for some, like some, some just chill reflection and get away from the hustle and bustle of it all. And if, if, if you're listening to this right now and you're like, I don't really care about working on my organization. I just want to work in it. You can stop this podcast. Now this podcast is not for you. Uh, <laughs> but if you want to scale, if you want to scale your business and you want it to, you want to see it grow to the levels that you believe in your heart, that it can grow. One of those things is practicing, practicing this self-evaluation and a way to do that is setting aside time for reflection. I would personally recommend if you're, if you're high up in the organization, I would recommend it no matter where you're at in the organization. Honestly, yeah. I'd recommend that you do it quarterly. Yeah. Um, and, and when you're 
the way to end that day of that you're completely setting aside a day. It's not a, it's not a day of rest. You're not going out and just laying on the beach all day, but it's a day for you to kind of go do things that rid your mind of the normal flow so that you can re so that you can introduce some new things and some new thoughts and some new ideas. And you can really start to have space mm. To reflect, um, but do that quarterly. And at the end of that day, go ahead and set the next one. Go ahead. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and put the next one on my calendar. And that way there's no like in between anything else you want to say on self uh, evaluation. No, that's great. Cool. So the third one that we, that we want to recommend, uh, this is, this goes a long way to, in, in creating the ideal culture that we talk about in the scalability playbook found at the culture base.com slash resources, uh, is to elevate upwards. Mm. Sorry evaluate, not elevate, evaluate. Yeah. Well, I guess you are elevating, right? <laughs> you're evaluate upwards on the org chart or the accountability chart, not just downwards. Mm -hmm. Most organizations are really good about, about evaluating downwards. Well, so-and-so down the chain, they're not cutting it. So we either need to move them or we need to put them on a pip or we need, you know, it's constant evaluations, right? Every 90 days, somebody's getting sit down and told how good and great or bad they are at their jobs. But how are you doing that on the way? How are you doing that upwards? How are you doing that for those that are above you in the, in the, in the org chart? And if you're at the top of the org chart, how are you doing that for yourself? Again, it goes back to that self-reflection thing. Maybe you have a board that you need to answer to. There's lots of different things, right? Yeah. Um, so figuring out a way to to evaluate upwards, not just downwards, is is going to keep you from constantly slipping back into that default DNA. Yeah, and part of growth is evaluation. You That's cannot right. grow without knowing what needs to grow, right? You cannot prune without understanding the rules of pruning. And mm. so if you don't evaluate and look at the said thing, you can't grow. And so with when you only evaluate downwards, you are essentially saying that the culture of growth is a subordinate principle, not a principle of the organization. And so if growth is everywhere and we should always have a mentality of growth, then the best way to do this is have the leader constantly asking, what can I do better? What, what else could I do? How is there anything you see in the organization? And the more you do it in such a way that it doesn't sound like a value based hit on you and it doesn't sound like a value based hit on them, people are going to engage in a curious, how do we make things better? They love yeah. the idea of growth when you find the right people who care about growth. But if you don't evaluate and you're like, we care about growth, no, 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 you just care about profit. That's different. Okay. Mm. They profit comes along with growth, I believe. But you can also just be about profit and not care about growth, and it actually stunts your growth and yeah. your ability to profit. Yeah. So short episode today, probably half of what we normally do, but that's because we want you to get out there and do it. Uh, next week, uh, when we get back with you, episode 58, we're going to uh, have an episode called They're Doing It Right. And we're going to talk about some companies that are thriving in team culture. And we're going to share mm -hmm. some kind of profiles with you on that and and how, what, what you can practically take away from them, implement into your own uh, organization in your own way and continue to scale in the way that you want get away from that default dna but understanding your default dna blake will help every single time you scale the way that you need to right absolutely awesome we'll talk to you next week on the culture based podcast have a good one